Hello and welcome to 10 Minutes to a Better Building, a podcast brought to you by Boland. I am your host, Michelle Don Mooney, and today we're talking about what does an open control system mean to you? We will take a closer look, get into some details, talk about some things that maybe will be challenges, but unfortunately. Fortunately for you, there are solutions, and we have two great guests who are going to talk about that today. Katie Kimmel is Controls Account Executive at Boland, and Matt Hinkle is Controls Technician at Boland. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. Excited to get into this conversation. So let's start off with a little foundation, if we can. What is an open control system? So um, kind of in a nutshell, an open control system, um, you know, is just very flexible in nature. So um, a control system that is, um, you know, where you can go and purchase different product from diff different distributors, a different, um, different solutions, um, applications, different services, and have, and have a different services provider throughout the life cycle of a control system. So, you know, very kind of driving home that whole flexible nature where an owner throughout the life cycle of that system has the opportunity to go to different places to purchase product, applications, solutions, and different service providers to support them. Um, there's also, um, you know, open uh, service tools. So, you know, if a customer has a control system and they may want to purchase their own ser their service tools to do some work um, in-house, or they may work with one um, you know, contractor and then decide to go to a different contractor. So as long as that contractor has access to service tools, uh, they, they can work on, on that control system. And then there's open protocols. And we hear a lot about open protocols, um, you know, in our business as far, you know, from, you know, purchasing a, um, a new system or looking at other types of systems to integrate to a control system. You know, the key word is what protocol is it? Uh, the standard really, the ASHRAE standard today that the industry is kind of normalizing around is BACnet, but there's also uh, Lawn and Modbus. And so when you think about other systems, perhaps, you know, a lighting control system or power monitoring system or an access or fire system, as long as those systems are inherently, you know, BACnet or Lawn or Modbus, then the owner has the opportunity to bring those systems together. So tell me about maybe some of the needs or the challenges that you're hearing from customers when it comes to handling open control systems. So uh, customers have, you know, uh, a lot of challenges when it comes to how they want to bridge maybe different OT systems in their building. If they've got, you know, a particular building automation system, but they have something that they need to bridge that, that, that data acquisition. So we can come in with, with open type of platforms and, and give them scalable solutions to help them uh, execute whatever it is that they need. If it's uh, trending, uh, just to make decisions, alarms, uh, whatever that solution is, we're here to help them. And uh, we have uh, opportunities to be able to uh, bridge that gap. Yeah, the good news is that there are plenty of options to make things easier for companies if they're dealing with some of those challenges that you talked about. So let's dive a little deeper. What mm -hmm. solutions are now available for people looking to address some of those concerns? Yeah, so I think, and in, in, uh, in Katie can chime in here too, but, um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, certain things that we've been able to do with different customers, cybersecurity, um, you know, we have remote service opportunities where we can, we can give them support. Um, you know, there is, uh, types of ways to, to, to be able to use those open systems to help them make decisions with building analytics, things of that nature. Yeah. To, to kind of piggyback on that, you know, once, once a customer does have an open control system, one of the things that really makes life easier for them is, you know, the ability for, um, their service provider to be to be able to help them, you know, kind of progress down the path of, you know, continuous commissioning, making that building perform better. Um, you know, at Boland, we like to, um, you know, with, you know, with the open control system and with a, you know, service contract that kind of meets the needs for the customer. Um, you know, with the ability, like Matt said, to, you know, have a, an analytics package attached to that control system. Um, and it allows us to constantly monitor the performance of the building, the, the equipment, and all the systems attached to it. So we can kind of help the customer always move forward in progression towards, you know, optimizing their buildings, uh, making them as, as most efficient as possible, and really keeping them fine-tuned. Um, another thing that we, that we talk about a lot is um, like a smart desk. So Boland has 
a smart desk where if our customers um, have a system that we can access, um, you know, versus having to call a service department and say, can you please come out whenever you have a technician available? Um, a smart desk gives the customer the ability to have a remote um, technician, you know, troubleshoot and provide service um, capability. So that's that seems to be something that customers today really, really enjoy. Let's talk about some of the results. Can you give us any examples of maybe how these methods are working? What kind of feedback have you been getting from customers? Um, so uh, it, um, I would say that, you know, we've had a lot of success where, you know, we've had customers, we had a federal customer that um, needed to uh, get a, a site connected quickly. And um, we, were, we were able to, you know, put together a solution, Katie and I, where we, we had to, you know, we presented it to the customer and uh, we were able to execute it. We were able to go and, and handshake the building and bring that data back to, uh, to a different area than where it is locally. And uh, we've had a lot of success there. Um, I would also say, you know, we've done some stuff here locally uh, where we've had, you know, smaller city municipal type, uh, you know, customers where, you know, they have a smaller footprint of people and those people, um, you know, they have to make decisions where they need an enterprise solution. And that's something that, again, Katie and I were able to do. Uh, right. You know, we were able to, to give them, you know, uh, the ability to connect different sites and those sites are all, you know, interoperable. Uh, it's open, it gives them, you know, the visibility and, uh, and alarming, also data. Uh, they can make uh, control decisions with the data that they have, and then they can service each of those different sites locally from one spot. And uh, they're able to to be more efficient, faster, and that's something that we're able to provide them. And and uh, and it's been a success. And this customer um, that that Matt's um, talking about, you know, they had you know, probably around eight buildings. It's a, it's a smaller local city. Um, they had about eight buildings where they had no BAS control um, and, and really, you know, no, no real ability to be able to see the buildings remotely. Um, so they had kind of like the, you know, the old glorified time clocks and things like that controlling their equipment um, and, and um, you know, really not efficient and also not easy to, to manage. And so, um, you know, by working together, you know, and and really allowing them to pull everything into one view, now the director of facilities can see every single building from his office, um, and that's super. You know, it's very powerful for um, for an owner to have that that ability to keep an eye on their buildings, and then also make sure that there's a schedule in place, and you know, equipment's not just running wild. So, it really does make life um, a lot easier and makes, you know, makes our entire city more efficient. Absolutely. And the exciting part is that technology is ever changing. So you never know what's around the corner. So as we wrap up here, let me ask you this. What are you most excited about when it comes to what Boland is working on right now to make those systems even more efficient? Um, I would, I would just share that, you know, we know that, you know, we're, Boland is, de is dedicated and, you know, we are, um, you know, committed to installing these open systems for our customers. Um, you know, we're, we're glad to have the option of both a train um, platform and also a Tridium platform for our owners. Um, you know, and we like to kind of help our customers through that decision making process. But we do we do remember that, you know, the BAS is a is a tool. Um, and at the end of the day, it, you know, it does require a team of professionals around it to really make it its best and most valuable. So, you know, we see customers that really want to save a lot of energy today and everyone's, you know, focused on, you know, really reducing their carbon footprint. Um, and so, you know, we like to, we like to tether these control systems with, um, you know, some sort of way to constantly, um, we, we have an, a group called ABI, which um, basically helps our customers find opportunities within the building to make it most efficient um, and, you know, create projects that the owner can then, um, you know, take to the owner can then turn around and say, you know, by, by implementing this project with my control system, I was able to reduce this amount of energy and save as much money. I think at the end of the day, it's important to keep that in mind that it's a tool and, you know, by partnering with a company like Boland, you can really make the most impact. Yeah, I would echo on that. I, you know, I think that, um, 
you know, the, the challenge in today's world is technology is changing so rapidly. And, you know, I think that people will be um, in a better place when they walk in Bowling Store because they're always on the cutting edge. Um, you know, we've seen a lot uh, with, just, you know, the IoT, you know, integration, analytics, and, and it's so rapid that, um, you know, I, I think it's a safe bet that when you come to Bowling that you're going to be able to see um, everything from, you know, starting a pump to seeing how we can make that pump efficient or a fan or whatever it is in the building. So, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're committed. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of things that a, a customer can leverage with Bolin and, um, you know, we've done it time and time again. So, um, you know, it's, we've had a lot of success and, uh, excited for the future. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people are listening to this too, maybe wanting more information because they want to jump on board. Where can they find out more information about everything we're talking about here today? Um, well, please feel free to um, reach out to our main offices. Um, we um, have a lot of information on our website at Bolin.com um, from training resources to understanding projects that we do, case studies. There's all sorts of information on the website. So we'd love to direct you there and then feel free, as like I said, to, to call the main office. And uh, you can ask for Matt and I if you would like to, um, but we're here to help. Appreciate it. Katie Kimmel, Controls Account Executive for Boland, and Matt Hinkle, the Controls Technician for Boland. Thank you both for being here. Wonderful conversation. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have more questions, so boland.com, you can go there. But thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And thank you for listening and viewing to 10 Minutes to a Better Building, which is a Boland podcast. And of course, you go to boland.com once again for more information. I'm your host, Michelle Dalmuni. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.